So hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's Trading Spotlight webinar here on Friday, the 31st of January 2020. Uh, my name is Jens Klatt and uh, today we want to uh, focus on a very, 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 very interesting topic. In fact, um, the question arose in our Trading Spotlight um, uh, community. And uh, someone asked them um, if we need to consider high frequency algorithms, high frequency trading uh, when it comes to our trading decisions. And um, I, I will give you an idea on uh, how it affects not just um, our trading, uh, but also uh, the um, uh, which, which in impact it has on uh, passive investors and correct in, in fact a very very substantial one um, i give you an idea on how to profit from it uh, still uh, i think it makes sense to dig into this topic a little deeper give you some ideas on the strategies which are used um, how this um, hft stuff works in general um, one thing i can say right here is i'm very very happy that i um was uh, or i am the chosen one i was the chosen one um here it was uh where it's my pleasure to talk about this today because my I myself consider this topic to be highly interesting in fact and I um yeah, I, I hope that I can uh, transport my uh, fascination um, about this topic here a little um, um, over over the screen here so let's have a look here at the agenda of today first question we want to answer how does high frequency trading in short, HFT work, what strategies do the so-called flash boys um, use, and how does this affect smaller traders? So that's what we want to focus on today. And uh, before we start, uh, sure, I could now certainly talk a little about myself. Um, you find an interview here, if you watch this on, on YouTube, you find an interview with me I did with Admiral Markets in uh, uh, July already last year, how I got started in trading, what's my um, educational background, everything, um, why trading, all this. You find all the information within this, this interview. And um, that's probably the only thing I'd, I'd like to say here about myself. Um, what's probably more interesting is, or that the most interesting thing is uh, that I'm located in uh, Germany, in Berlin, in Germany, and um, Admiral Markets as a global um, provider of financial services especially in the um, FX and retail, uh, FX and CFD retail industry, um, has also an office here in Berlin and Germany. That's one thing definitely uh, noteworthy when it comes to our markets. Why? Because uh, this is an English-speaking webinar, uh, but also all German um, um, listeners to this right now, but also everyone from around the world, in fact, um, has, uh, where everyone has a great chance to reach out to someone when reaching out to the customer support from our markets to get someone on the line who speaks his respective language, his native language. So that's definitely something to consider when, when choosing your broker. On top of that, there's also a highly competitive offering. So here in Germany, for example, our main focus is certainly on the DAX. Um, Admiral Markets, as far as I know, um, is one of the, if not the most competitive broker when it comes to trading costs around the DAX um, and um, has very, very competitive spreads here. Also, in addition to that, I can also say um, if someone is um, especially a short-term trader, it's probably something interesting for or in regards to the HFT topic here today. Um, then also you should definitely give Admiral Prime um, a deeper look, an offering from Admiral where FX especially um, uh, comes into the main focus here and here. I can say that um, on external websites, you can run comparisons of the spreads being offered um, and um, Admiral Prime is among the most competitive um, uh, um, offerings here when it comes to the raw spread um, in general, in addition to a very, very low commission when it comes to FX trading. So make long thing short, definitely give Admiral Markets a deeper look when uh, looking for a broker, respectively, if you're not um, um, uh, yeah, fine with your current broker, let's say, listening to this right now, probably Admiral is uh, then your, your next choice and should be, or is definitely worth a deeper look. So now, I want to start with uh, two book recommendations and not only that. So what I've prepared here is the following. So this is Broken Markets. That's the uh, book on the on the right. And then also Flash Boys. It's not just that I recommend the books because I Googled it and um, I, I think, well, it makes sense and gives myself um, um, some kind of, let's call it seriousness. But I read the books myself. And again, I can highly recommend those two um flash boys from michael lewis probably you have heard about it, it um, um 
yeah, it resulted in 2000 and I think it was 14 once the book was published. Mike Lewis, by the way, is also the author of The Big Short, um, uh, the, the uh, movie. Some of you might have seen it. Uh, it was based on a book which was written by Lewis. He's also the author of um, one of the um, evergreens when it comes to trading literature. It's called Liar's Poker. Um, and yeah, so I, I love the books from Lewis um, before he published Flash Boys. And then he published the book. I read it and I, I got hooked on the topic um, and it resulted also in yeah kind of an earthquake within the um a trading industry especially among institutionals um he's he's talking about the story of a trader who uh, recognized strange behaviors in the market um and 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 um yeah which which resulted in deeper um analysis of what's happening there and then um, 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 solving the problem by um, founding his own stock exchange. No joke. Uh, so yeah, that's um, the story about Flash Boys. After I read this book, I, I wanted to dig deeper into the topic around high frequency trading. And um, there was uh, a guy, both, I'm not sure, Zell Arnock and uh, Joe Saluzzi, they both were mentioned, I think, in, in Flash Boys. And um, I Googled them, found out that they wrote a book. Um, also one which digs very deep into this topic. Both are expert in their field. Um, they are also consultants to regulatory bodies, for example, to how to overcome the problem. But not only that, but also explaining very well and in an easy language, um, which strategies aim to to or to how to profit uh, or how high frequency traders, HFTs try to profit um, uh, from, from certain markets um, uh, or given aspects in the markets in general, also regulatory aspects. So I both, um, um, both of these books are highly recommendable. So I definitely um, um, uh, um, say I recommend reading these books on further details on this topic we want to dig um, deeper into now. So, um, yeah, first question, how does HFT work? So we could make long thing, long thing short here and say it's uh, complex algorithmic trading. It's fully automated trading um, where which uh, or in which large numbers of orders are executed within milliseconds. So quick in and out of the market. That's um, very rough to say this is how, how HFT or, or high frequency algorithms work um, and how they make their money, in fact. Um, now, the thing is that over, the, over time, and once you, you talk to um, those favoring HFT trading, they will usually uh, claim that they add liquidity to the markets and eliminate small bid-ask spreads because... <clears throat> Because of them um, um, going quick in and out in the market and because of their um, 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 speed, uh, certainly that might be true. The only problem is um, that the liquidity which they claim to provide to the market is um, only there theoretically. So you can certainly um, 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 make a screenshot, but you will see that the liquidity is not really there. So you can't really trade on it. Or if you want to trade on it, you have to be very quick, respectively. If you want to trade bigger volumes, this is especially true for institutional players, um, you will find out that uh, the depth behind the order being displayed in the order book um, is not as deep as it seems at first glance. Um, in fact, we will um, I'm look at this in a, in a few minutes then. It's a technique we call pinging. It's um, you you uh, try to find out um, where are buyers in the market. So you shoot orders at the market and you try to get information of the players being uh, within the marketplace. And once you have this information, you try to exploit the knowledge about this. So in fact, this is um, yeah. You can if if you want, you can you can think about this um, as a, a rabbit, uh, which is in this case institutional money, and the HFT is the hunter trying to um yeah or hunting the rabbit respectively trying to kill the rabbit no joke this is a very very way fa fair way to put it in fact so um and yeah there are two primary criticisms of hft then so it allows institutional players to gain an upper hand in trading because they can trade in large blocks through the use of algorithms um and liquidity is sometimes fake liquidity that was what i what i referred to 
um, I, I, I somehow want to skip, in fact, the first point because um, that's yeah, it's a little difficult, let's say. So I, I'd really like to, to focus here on the second aspect because this is also something I'd consider to be um, relevant in, in our um, um, uh, trading, in fact. So, and uh, especially when it comes to, to, um, to how can we say that, um, when, it, when it comes to bid and ask spreads. So what you want to have is you want to have market depth for most of us, let's say 99, 99.5%, 99 probably that doesn't make a difference um, uh, because our volume is not as high that it plays um, um, a role here. But for those trading bigger volume, it starts to play a role because that might at first glance look at, as if you have cheap um, um, and favorable market conditions when it comes to cost of trading and at the end you find out that um, you're, you're you're probably paying a way higher price which naturally affects your overall profitability so um, that's in short how um, HFT work and um, when you google a little you will um, quickly uh, you will quickly learn that there is um, a special lingo, uh, so a special language when it comes to HFTs um, or high frequency trading, uh, which is in fact difficult to understand. So uh, this is one of the reasons why I certainly recommend here reading books like Flash Boys or probably especially Broken Markets from Azel Arnock and, and Joe Saluzzi, uh, because they they um, um, they give a very good explanation on on, on uh, certain topics here, which are usually um, uh, kind of um, how can we say. Uh, intimidating let's say so um so probably some might say okay yeah i'm aware that there's hft trading going on but i won't I don't want to dig too deep into this topic because this sounds very very uh, complicated in fact so let's let's um let's give an idea on um some um uh, on topics which might probably have also played a role in your trading for example, co-location. What is co-location? Uh, it's locating HFT computers in the same premises where an exchange computer service are housed for millions of USD, in fact. So this is a business model of stock exchanges. If someone wants, wonders where um, uh, um, stock exchanges make their money from, it's, for example, because they are selling uh, their yeah, in fact, sellers to some extent to HFT companies um, for millions of, of US dollars here to make sure that they have quick and even probably quicker access to the market and, and, um, um, and the, the orders um, in the marketplace and trying to exploit them um, than other market participants, also HFTs, for example. And this is just to access stock prices a split second, in fact, before the rest and just for the privilege of low latency access. This is, by the way, co-location is also a topic which has um, probably uh, been around for, um, for a while for, for algorithmic traders, um, also using, for example, expert advisors. So um, what, what I recommend you doing is, for example, that you are working... Um, here with a low latency respectively co-located um, 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 algorithm which is very very close to the execution venue or and or the the lps um so that that there's no big latency when it comes to your trading this is especially true when we have a high uh, um, uh, frequency um, um, algorithm in our retail business even though it's not as extreme here as it is when it comes to hft trading and millions of dollars but this is something you might probably consider so make sure that the um, server you're using here is um, really co-located to the lp making sure that there's no high um, um, um level of latency then when it comes to the auto execution in your regards avoiding or diminishing the impact which a slippage for example might have on your um, um, on your on your uh, overall profitability so here this is um, probably something which is even um, um, more extreme and, and perfectly ex um, um, explains what I just um, um, talked about. Um, this co-location explains why the old NYSE building occupied only only uh, 46,000 um, square feet, while the NYSE Euronext data center in Mawa, um, New Jersey here, is nearly 10 times as large with 398,000 square feet uh, when it comes to um, 
when it comes to the to the um, um, uh, uh, yeah the greatness is, is this is the right word um, when it comes to the to the place which is used or which is needed um, so in fact this has mainly to do here the Euronext uh, data center nice Euronext data center is mainly occupied by computers and algorithms and this is this is what you can what you can see there so the traders or the the, the, the the classic trader and how it looks has definitely changed over time and there's uh, plenty of these uh, now in the markets so Next thing, I already mentioned it, um, latency. So latency um, is what we talk about when it comes to the time that elapses from the moment a signal is sent to its receipt. So from a pure technical standpoint. Um, so lower latency equals faster speed, which means high frequency traders spend heavily to obtain the fastest computer, hardware, software, but also data lines. Um, and this is something which is also well described, greatly explained um, within the book Flash Boys from, from Michael Lewis, where um, we, we have um, big projects done on, um, uh, on, on, on the, on the um, cables which are used here and and where you try to exploit what's physically possible when it comes to in this case the speed of light in fact so what you try is to get it to as as high as possible um to the speed of light the um um uh, um data which is which is which is then um, sent here and and, uh, and and you try to even um uh, decrease um uh, the latency even further by being as near to the um to the to the um, um recipient of your signal here as possible so where co-location comes into play then in fact and uh yeah and this speed here in fact is um is the the reason why um hfts are spending millions of dollars so you can already see we are only talking about microseconds milliseconds microseconds here um <clears throat> but the thing is that uh being only one millisecond quicker than your um, direct competitor can make a difference of millions of dollars while you probably willing to spend millions of dollars to gain this act because um, if you if you uh, subtract the cost of doing business here to the money you make from HFT trading at the end you're still well ahead in fact and this is what then gives you your competitive edge in trading in fact so and then we have also this ping that's something I already mentioned Two, um, this is the this 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 tactic of entering small marketable um, orders, 100 shares. So it's only a small fraction, um, but you and this is the target which um, HFTs um, um, uh, um, uh, try to to achieve here. What they want is they want to learn about large hidden orders. So some of you probably have heard about iceberg um, orders. So you only see a small fraction, um, but if you hit someone on the bid, you will see that the um, the price does not change, but you're hitting on, let's say, you see on, let's say 100 pieces on, on 50, 50 USD. Um, and then you have, uh, you buy those 100 shares for 50, and then you have another 100 right after um, um, you, you, you got filled on your first 100. It can buy another 100 and you can buy another 100. And that has to do with the fact that there's probably 10,000 pieces being offered, but to avoid that market participants can see um, um, you, the stock exchanges offer, especially to big institutional players, they offer a chance of um, work with something we call iceberg order so that you only see a small fraction and can't really see that there's um, a big seller in the market, which would naturally result in markets to drop, which would then re, um, um, result in a in a um, unfavorable price or more unfavorable favorable price for the um, big institutional seller. In this case, um, we now have also a development we call the dark pools. This is also something. Um, which which um, 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 uh, established over the last years. So this is um, a special place for institutional players, it's making sure that you can't really um, see how much willingness to buy respectively to sell is given there. That's why it's dark. And then you can't really see it. Um, and uh, this is also something which is exploited by um, HFTs then in this case. Um, in, for example, with a technique we call pinging. So you try to find out, like, um, like, uh, um, so in Germany we call this U-Boot. It's, uh, it's, uh, how you call this? I'm sorry, I, I, I'm missing the word. Let me, let me just see. Probably I'm, I'm, I'm quick to, to find it out here. Um, 
And then they're, they're working with something. Uh, in Germany, we call this uh, Zona. This is like, um, um, probably it's the same in, in the English speaking world. Let me just see. The website is, is too slow here. Um, so, submarine. Yes, a yellow submarine. There we go. So, the Beatles once sang about this. So, it's a submarine. Um, and let me just see. Zona. Let me see. But I think this should be very similar. Yeah. So, <clears throat> You can imagine this to to uh, to be similar to to a, a submarine here, um, which is sending out this this signal to find out whether there's probably um, uh, something to take care of or to to be careful about, um, something like a stone or whatever. Um, and uh, pinging works the same way. So what these these market um, um, players here do is they ping the market and try to find out um, whether there is some, some bigger hidden order they can then try to um, take advantage of. How this works um, is in fact, probably I should just read what's written here. So I don't need to, to read. It's a submarine sending out sonar signals. So that's what's written here. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, so we want to focus now on these strategies exactly, and then give an idea of how this works and how um, um, you can uh, you can imagine this. What's what's going on there? And I also want to to try to explain this with an even um, better idea because the techniques which are used or strategies which are used from uh, um, the Flash Boys here, we want to now have a look at here at the next slide. Um, it's these are techniques which have been around for years since markets exist in fact and then and, and there's trading at stock exchanges only that today everything is um, a little quicker let's say and faster but um <clears throat> At the end of the day, the techniques are very, very similar. Um, and, and what flash boys, respectively high frequency traders try to profit from. So first of all, let's now focus on something which is uh, focusing on so-called rebate trading. So some of you probably have uh, learned about the um, uh, yeah big fragmentation, especially in the US um, equity market. So there's not only one um, 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 stock exchange, the NYSE, but there's several um, stock exchanges. And uh, the, 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 the marketplace is very, very fragmented. And um, the reason for that is also because there is a technique that um, we have a so-called maker-taker model. So maker-taker means there's someone who's making the market and there's someone who's taking uh, the liquidity offered. So um, when we, for example, um, um, trade, there's also maker taker to some extent. So if I place a buy limit into the uh, into the uh, platform in my Admar trading uh, Admar markets uh, trading platform, I am a maker. So I offer someone. Um, uh, to see that I'm willing to buy at a certain price or I'm willing to sell at a certain price. So this is what we call maker, while someone who's then trading on this liquidity and taking um, uh, um, my offer respectively, um, is buying from me respectively is, is um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm selling to me at a certain price um, is the taker. So he's taking away um, liquidity. Someone who is making a market uh, gets a rebate from a stock exchange because he um, all in all adds to the um, attractiveness of the marketplace and it's, it's rewarded for this. So if you're a, a market maker, if you're, if you're adding liquidity to the system by selling or buying shares at a limit price, um, you or your, your behavior naturally results in a, um, um, a diminishing spread adding to the attractiveness of the marketplace, which is then attracting more traders to come to trade at your, at your venue, which means that you're getting rewarded for this. So this is how the game is played. Someone who is taking away liquidity, so someone who is, we call this crossing the spread and is um, I'm working with a market order and buying on, let's say, the, the next offered price, um, he's taken away liquidity and that's why he has to pay the exchange, in fact. So in, in case of, of, of CFDs, this is not the place, uh, not the, not the, um, um, this is not the case, 
because here we're talking about OTC um, and, and, and derivatives, in fact. So it's over-the-counter products. But um, when you trade shares, you probably have seen it's not only the commission you have to pay your broker, but in addition to that, you also have to pay the exchange where you're getting executed. You have to pay them a small piece, in fact, a small commission. And that's why you, you're taking away liquidity in this case. So um, and uh, so what, what if HSTs do here is they try to profit from this um, um, uh, rebate structure and they do something uh, or they do this by in this case rapidly posting buy and sell orders and they get paid for um, every order they 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 flash or which flashes up here and they get hit by the only problem is it's only small pieces they get filled on but on every piece they are getting filled on they are getting a rebate from the exchange in this case. So this is the first how they make money. If now, and this is something we call a rebate trading arbitrage, um, it's something which is very common or similar to arbitrage itself, it could mean that, for example, you are buying here at this exchange where you or you you, you post a bid um, at, at exchange XYZ where you get a rebate, and at the next exchange you sell it where you don't have to um, um, pay a commission for trading, for example or it's probably that you get 10 cents here and only have to pay eight cents at the other exchange uh, where you where you are directly selling what you um, uh, what you bought where you received um, um, the rebate because you you placed the sell limit and someone was um, was 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 buying to you um, that this results in a small gain of two cents then because one exchange you get ten cents at the other you pay eight cents and it's difference of two cents but if you do this op often enough then you make plenty of money trading that or doing that per share whatever um, and this is how you can understand rebate trading in this case so it's uh, like in fact it's liquidity providing the only problem is that <clears throat> This is, for example, one example where this is this is something where you can understand why someone places an order in the order book and is then um, uh, this this order is directly deleted because if he can't really profit from any kind of of um, 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 arbitrage environment, um, the order will just um, be taken away. So it just flashes up and then it goes away and there's no no real hit um, um, on this on this order. Respectively, again, uh, we have also only small pieces. And, um, and this is also something which is not very favorable for institutions, in, in, institutional traders who have to trade larger um, 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 uh, volumes, in fact. So the next thing is so-called momentum trading or momentum ignition. That's something which is really well explained in this book, Broken Markets. Um, and this is something I want to give you an idea on um, with the explanation a little later. So you get a, I, I hope that you get a better understanding of how this works but um quick um it's hft here look for temporary supply demand imbalances also provoke them sometimes you can see that the market spikes higher um for whatever reason this is mainly um because market or in this case um, um, um hfts are um, pushing the market to a level where they expect for example big in this case, uh, stops to sit, or there might be um, kind of a cloud of stocks uh, stops in this case, which means if they expect here many market participants being stopped out on a trade, let's say on a short position because the market reaches a certain level and then squeezes higher, this is um, this is a technique which which is used from HFTs to try to profit from these imbalances then in regards to supply and demand and um, they trade then with this short term momentum. Um, as equilibrium, equilibrium is restored in this case. So we can also refer to this as tape reading. It's a, it's a um, special technique, in fact. And we can also combine this with other techniques. So some probably not only trade um, um, this momentum approach, but they also probably combine it with rebate trading or also and you can see there's gray areas to this. It's also something we know as so-called statistical arbitrage. So here, what you do is you exploit pricing differentials between correlated securities or markets uh, and markets and stock exchanges. So you not only do this arbitrage here in regards to rebates, but you also can do this when it comes to stock prices and um, um, ETFs or a basket of stocks and an ETF, for example. If there's an imbalance and you can see that, for example, um, an ETF 
is uh, trading at a higher price um, than the 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 uh, basket of shares which is within the ETF here, um, and you can quickly calculate this. You could easily profit from this. You could sell the ETF short while buying the um, 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 the the basket of of um, of shares, and that why lock in a risk free a risk free um, and profit. In fact, so this is how you could um, understand statistical arbitrage. In fact, um, the same is also true here for so-called fungible um, stocks like Pepsi and Coke. So um, um, if you see Coke trading at a, um, at, a, at a discount to Pepsi, what you could do is um, you could say, okay, I buy Coke um, um, shares and then I sell Pepsi shares, Pepsi shares short and that way I, I, I lock in a profit since I expect both um, shares <clears throat> to trade back at um, or towards the so-called fair price or the equilibrium in fact um, and these techniques are used from from um, hfts in fact so some of them were already known in the 1980s 1970s 1980s uh, for example uh, at thorpe with his um, um, hedge fund um, and pnp for example he uh, it's not that he invented it, but what he did, he was um, 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 calculating the fair value of a warrant based on a formula um, even before Black and Scholes um, 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 published their uh, their piece there in, I think, 19, 1974, I think. Um, so he was able to calculate the fair value of a warrant um, and then using this knowledge here and trade the stock um, 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 accordingly. Let's say he found out that the warrant was priced to high so he was selling short the warrant while on the other hand buying uh, the respective stock for example that was already statistical arbitrage and he um, turned out to be one of the most successful traders um, um, here which which has ever lived or who has ever lived um, also being a topic for example in the book hedge fund market wizards from uh, jack schwager so there was an interview with him um, he's oh by the way at Forbes, some of you probably now that doesn't ring a bell, but you probably have heard about the book Beat the Dealer, Blackjack, uh, and also Beat the Market. So the uh, techniques um, he or used there and how he exploited those indifferences um, um, are described in the book Beat the Markets and then here statistical arbitrage as, as a big topic, for example. So only that HFTs today make this um, um, even quicker. So <clears throat> now let's look here at momentum trading and ignition and, and, and try to give you an idea on uh, this, I call it Oli but Goldie. Hopefully I can um, explain it in a way that you understand this, but um, I think it's definitely worth um, to, to dig deeper into this topic, okay? So some of you probably have already once seen an order book. So there we go. Um, and what we have here is you have green, here is the bid and here is the ask. So these are the buyers and these are the sellers, okay? So <clears throat> when looking at this, that looks quite normal. So it's nothing special. There's no big buyers. There's no big sellers right here. Um, it's the order book on the DAX in this case. It's the future, in fact, it's the order book. So it's, it's, it's um, um, a real real um, 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 market. It's not um, um, OTC or something, but it's uh, traded at the Eurex. So now <clears throat> what I did here, is I, um, it's, it's quickly painted a sequence of higher highs and higher lows. And some of you might have wondered who buys here? I mean, at the end, we, to some extent, probably expect the market to, to reverse here since uh, but still we, we have seen um, occasions where the market just kept on rising. So, uh, but now the question is, when looking at this structure and seeing already the market having um, um, significantly broken these highs here, and when, when looking at the structure, you might say from a risk reward perspective, not really, I'm not really sure whether I want to buy at this level here. But the question certainly arises, who will buy there, especially in the lower time frame? So sometimes, yeah, you might explain this with, with um, 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 different trading strategies. But um, at the end of the day, you probably have wondered all the time, why, who is buying there and why is he buying there? So in fact, it's, um, it's an easy explanation. There's some players who um, fake 
with the willingness to buy more and to let the price rise. So how can you imagine that? It's in fact very simple. So if you want someone to buy or if you want someone to do something, let, let's probably put this, I, I read a story about um, um, this year um, and I probably this is this is even. I, I'm not a I'm not a um, a reader of of Mark Twain or of um, Huckleberry Finn and, and and Tom Sawyer, but just imagine the following picture. So you have Tom Sawyer sitting in front of a um, of a fence. Okay, he's painting the fence. It's summer. Uh, it's holiday, and he wants to play with his friends. The only problem, where he wants to do something else, let's say, friends, we will, we 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 need those those friends. Um, but now he's sitting there. He has to paint the fence. Now there's people coming, friends, little boys, uh, and they ask him, hey, what, what are you doing there? Why are you painting the fence? I mean, uh, it's, the sun is shining, so let's, let's play. But he has to because it's uh, work he has to do for whatever reason. So now the thing is, um, difficult for him to answer the question. And, and he's looking at, uh, at, these, uh, at these other boys. He's looking at them and saying, yeah, well, I do this because I just love it. It's so great. You can't imagine it to paint this fence. Yes, you might say the sun is shining, but I, I can paint this fence here. And this is really fulfilling. This is awesome. It's just great to paint this fence. Does he mean this? No, definitely not. But the boy where the boys, they are getting interested in and just looking at them and saying, wait, oh, is it really that great? Yes. Okay, can, can I help you? So probably you convince him by that. Uh, so the boys are already convinced. And Tom says, no, 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 sorry, but I, I, I'm, I, I don't want to, to, um, um, uh, to, to um, um, give, give, back, give away my work here because it's so great. And the boys say, oh, come on, please. No, 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 no. It's my work and I want to paint the fans. And, okay, I give you 10 euro or USD in this case. So I give you $10 if you, uh, if you give me the tool here so that I can uh, um, um, paint the fence. You give me 10 USD. Okay, cool. Give me the 10. And then, but it's really, it's like, I give you the, I give you the chance to paint the fence now because I really like you. And it's not because of the money and the 10 USD, but there we go. So he takes the 10 USD, he enjoys his ice cream, the, the sun and everything. This is what Tom does while the other guy is painting the fence, finding out quickly that um, it's not that nice to paint the fence. But he paid for this because Tom convinced him to pay for this, for this great endeavor to paint a fence. Okay, now let's take this example, put it here on the order book and at the situation and answer the question, who buys here? So it's those people who are have who fear to miss out the so-called FOMO so fear of missing out it's a cognitive bias which plays a, a very important role when it comes uh, to trading in fact so how can you provoke even a higher interest of people now to buy there it's very easy so those market participants who want to sell here who have probably bought in this region and want to sell here they try to indicate or they fake if you want they buy, fake that there's strong buying interest here that's why they put a lot of buying orders here and which naturally results in the bit um here in this case um increase from let's say four pieces you can see here to let's say four thousand so there's obviously a very big buyer then and market participants looking at the order book seeing the big buyers here 4000 5000 9000 and and lots of buyers who are willing to buy here they look at this and they say okay great wow this is awesome so there's lots of of buying interest there so what what does it mean well it means that um there's probably a big player knowing that big news is coming so i will buy before him so to be positioned once the um 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 asset in this case explodes higher at the same time you're not seeing any big sellers here but you see very very thin offers in this case so the ask site is nearly empty while you have lots of buyers and this is exactly here where most of these institutional players want to sell okay so what you then see is the volume picking up so if you have a stock exchange, you can, you can display the volume below the chart. You see the volume picking up while there's no real sellers here or are there sellers? Sure they are, because now you see that, for example, here at 9,000, 
157. At this level, the two is an iceberg order, which means you're not seeing that there is 20,000 shares behind this who want to sell. And now everyone gets filled here. So these people are taking liquidity so they are the, the the taker and they cross the spread and they buy because they they have fear of missing out and they buy so now the thing is the first let's say 10 pieces that's taken away but the market does not spike higher but it stays at 9157 then the next 210 whatever is displayed the next one is crossing the spread because now the buyers are still here. Probably there's even more buyers um, um, coming up here in the order book uh, or those faking interest in buying the asset. Um, and in fact, they want to sell. So they, they create the illusion of buying. But in fact, what you see is that all these people who crossed the spread here are filled at 9,157. So the market is not trading higher here, but it's like it's fixed at this level. And um, then you see that the market is not picking up. But in fact, after all this selling, which needs to be done from those who wanted or who needed someone to buy from them here within this region, once this um, um, is done and, and they have sold all what they wanted to sell, the buying power here or the buying the orders they disappear they're not there anymore once these people who are now crossed the spread who bought and who are sitting on big long positions ex um, um, expecting the market to explode higher um realizing oh there is no buying interest and then the market starts to trickle lower because there's obviously no one buying no anymore um, while here the buyers disappear and then the market trickles lower and then these people who have bought at to the selling pressure by selling those pieces out they just accumulated um, once they cross the spread and being faked from the buyers who um, here faked their interest in buying the asset the same is then true on the other hand so you can you can um, mirror this and you will find out that it's, it's the same way it plays the other direction and this what i now explained in several minutes is taking place within seconds and this is also how hfts initiate momentum in fact they ignite momentum and try to result in the market pushing higher respectively selling lower from there um and and and, and create the illusion of there is a buyer respectively there is a seller so that said um the question now obviously occurs okay how does this affect smaller traders smart traders are probably not affected but even these are affected to some extent um so now, now let's have a look here so first of all it's a negative effect for retail traders um that this behavior uh and and this 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 faking especially results in an erratic and unsustainable um uh, development or market structure so the market spikes probably higher with no real buying power being behind the move or momentum being initiated, uh, which is then sold off again because it was just a, let's call it stop fishing move, whatever. Um, and this is even true, uh, probably even more true for illiquid market, but also true for liquid markets um, like FX and it occurs more often than some of you um, 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 think. So when looking, for example, at assets like gold, like WTI, but also last year, at the beginning of last year, it's nearly one year ago, one and a half, no, one year, it was at January, and second to third January NFX, look at JPY, um, for example, there was also um, a big bounce um, or a big drop lower on, on uh, such a potential flash crash happening, mostly initiated by um, HFTs here. And so that says how it affects small traders is that once you work with stop orders, um, you have the risk of slippage and rising costs in your trading in general. But this is not only true for retail traders, but also for investors. So um, probably some of you have um, heard about this um, zero commission trading offering which now several brokers in the us offer when it comes to share trading it's great the only question is if you're not um, um uh having this commission where do you make the money from as a broker i can explain you where the money is made from because your order flow and it's not just your retail order flow but the order flow from institutionals um, who are offering something like um, ETFs or something like that, uh, the order flow is sold, for example, to HFTs. They are paying good money for, for this um, um, order flow to know what orders come in 
and then based on their algorithms exploit it so um in fact you you're in, in case you are an investor trading on zero commission models you are sold um at the end of the day it doesn't make such a big difference because we're only talking about cents in this case but these cents add up and if you're um, um an only investing let's say um, um once a month buy let's say an etf for 100 euros each month it doesn't affect your trading that much but it's definitely something to consider when when looking at these great offers so some somewhere needs to make money from somewhere especially when it comes to brokerage and when it comes to financials and this is usually the way it works so your order flow is sold that's it so <clears throat> It's uh, now let's, let's 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 have a look at this here. So retail investors also face higher costs. For example, when buying a stock, uh, stock using a VWAP. VWAP is volume um, weighted average price. This is, for example, a technique which is also used from big institutionals. Um, and this can be if if the HFT knows how most of the volume here um, comes into the market and based on which technique, in this case, this classic VWAP approach, and buy um, um, the ETF, respectively, the stocks you need for your portfolio as a portfolio manager, as a big fund, whatever. Um, this can be exploited from HFTs here by manipulating, for example, the price higher we are this what i just explained this this momentum ignition strategy if you know what your opponent will do you can naturally exploit it that's like playing poker with um uh, your cards face up so uh that's definitely something which or how you can imagine this on where hfts profit from and um nevertheless there's also an advantage and there's something which is also noteworthy for example, you probably have seen in our Traders Yard community, there's one approach I'm trading there. That's the S&P open range breakout approach. And um, what I naturally do, I probably can, can show this to you. One, one second, please. Uh, let me just see. Is it here? Yes. Let me just give you um, here a quick glance at what I wrote yesterday. So here's the setup from yesterday. And there you can see I write take profit none now uh, it's time to uh, uh to tell the, f the, the 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 complete truth here it's not none but it's uh take profit 10 r away from the entry price because what i do is that i work with something we call fishing limit so i have a fixed stop loss for my position but when i trade and knowing about hfts and the potential that sometimes there is um, 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 an algo, uh, algo playing wild, let's say, and there is a huge sell-off happening, um, then you naturally want to profit from it to some extent. And so what I do here, for example, is I place a fishing limit nearly 10 R away from the entry price, which means once such a flash crash happens, I can exit the market on such a move lower, for example, once the market spikes aggressively lower or also on the upside. This is the same, um, same principle, which is behind that. This is a technique you can use as a retail trader and which is not um, um, a technique which could be used from big institutional players because the volume I trade as a retail trader is far smaller than the volume which is traded from an institutional trader. So it affects traders all in all in a negative way, especially when it comes to slippage, especially when it comes to um, 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 rising costs for retail investors who want to buy um, um, an ETF, whatever. But at the end, you also have a chance to profit from the knowledge around HFTs and their tendency to uh, push markets even though it's not a fundamental driven move, but significantly higher or lower um, with some techniques like working with such fishing limits. So place a limit significantly away from your entry price or from your, um, from, yeah, from your enterprise in this case. Um, and there will be one day once you will awake on the right side of variance and uh, your, your limit is probably hit then by such a flash crash happening. So. Now, let's sum up what we learned today. So HFT is a complex algorithmic trading in which large numbers of orders are executed within milliseconds. So probably it's not um, good to say seconds, but it's really milliseconds. Um, some of the strategies used by the Flash Boys are rebate trading, momentum trading, and statistical arbitrage. So 
in fact, most of the strategies used here are only um, derivatives of this, and it's um, a lot of gray area then. Um, and retail traders are mostly affected by more erratic market behavior, potentially increasing the cost of trading slippage. It also means erratic market behavior. There's tendencies to fake outs on the upside, on the downside. Also, sometimes initiated by HFT. The problem with that is that it's also important to have a mental uh, framework, which is very, very stable. And don't get um, caught into emotions around your trading, which is easier said than done, in fact. But um, we want to focus here not on the mental aspects, but on the rising trading costs, slippage, wider spreads, probably, uh, which is also true for investors. For example, using discount brokers when buying, selling their investment products via VVOPs, for example. So all in all, rising trend, uh, trading uh, con con commissions. Um, but there's also the chance to profit from the knowledge of HFTs in your trading by working with so-called fishing limits then. And um, that's it. So I have to hurry up a little bit because I, I just uh, glanced at the uh, at the at um, at my watch and then I see that I have to hurry up. It's five minutes too long. But um, I, I, I hope that uh, you're fine with that because I, again, I hope that that um, you, you became aware that this is a very fascinating topic and I highly recommend digging deeper into this. Um, it's not that we will profit from this um, respectively, that we will be HFT traders when uh, using our retail equipment, but still it's a fascinating topic, which will also give you a very good explanation and idea of how markets work, how an order book works and, and uh, yeah, how liquidity uh, works and all this, which is very, very important also, not just from a theoretical aspect, but also when it comes to trading yourself to understand market and, and um, sustainability of moves, for example, a little better. So Monday, same time, join Paul here to learn about the intraday trading of European indices, including how to choose which index which you want to focus on then, what to be aware of before you trade, and also how to position yourself best for success. It will be 2 p.m. London as today, 3rd of February, 2020. You are here in the live event, which means you have already registered, so you will get the link to your inbox. If you haven't and you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget, first of all, give a thumb up if you liked it. Um, and also feel free to go to the website, atmarmarkets.com, and there to the top education and trading um, or webinars, and there register for the trading spotlight. And um, there we have it. That's the website. So um, here is the contact details and here is the risk disclaimer. That's it from my end. All the best. I hope you enjoyed um, everything I said. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them right below here in the um, uh, chat box, then YouTube chat box or in our Trades Your community. I'd be uh, more than happy to answer your questions. Have a nice weekend. All the best. Talk to you soon. See you and bye-bye.